Hello, everybody out there. This is episode number 67 of Heard Not Seen, produced by John Beethan. And if you're a loyal listener, you know this is Rebecca Freedom, one and only. Today, we're going to talk about the meaning of life coaches. There's some pretty exciting, amazing things happening. So, I mean, the fact that we're, again, I keep plugging this, but episode 67, all the goodies that you hear during this episode will be in show notes. uh, And and we are on Apple iTunes. We're on Spotify. I think we're in like... It's it's Apple Podcasts. Podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts. So there, there are ways to be able yeah, to Apple plug Podcasts, in. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, anywhere that you get your podcasts. And we all know, just like when you're stuck in traffic driving home from your uh, exhausting job or whatever, podcasts are the thing to listen to, especially heard, not seen, especially this one. Duh. Yeah, just, you know, I know you want to get into the show, but I just want to say... <laughs> From 2004, when I got involved in podcasting, uh-huh. to 2009, I had logged about 3,000 listening hours. And this wasn't entertainment, mostly I listen to. I, it's mostly education. There's so much out there. Yeah. So much out there that you can really plug into. Um, I also want to say to everybody that I have a head cold, so yay, yay for the chemtrails and whatever else is going around <laughs> giving us... Um, a little bit of sickness, i.e. downtime. So cool. Let's like, let's kind of talk about that. Let's talk about the world of coaches, because I recently did a post on my uh, personal Facebook page that was like, listen, life coaches, let's talk. Because someone recently told me that your origin story is your credential now. Because social media gives us this veneer of expertise, of the expertise, because you happen to know an algorithm, or you can get up to like 10,000 followers, 20,000 followers, and start to be, quote unquote, a person of influence because of the followers you have, this then has somehow become a credential to the person who's the avatar behind that digital veneer. It doesn't necessarily mean, though, that person has gone and gotten proper training or has had a um, a, a teacher, or in my case, I've gone to Naropa, gotten my master's degree. They can just say, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a life coach. I'm a consultant. There's like this, this sort of hodgepodge of titles that actually had some credibility to them back in the day. But now it's like, it's like a grab bag. So how do you know what the real deal is? Well, that's the whole point, the meaning of life coaches that we're talking about today. It's like, who do you actually trust with your time and your money and your life, your life? I'm glad you're doing this subject. It's been of interest to me. Well, I think a lot of people, first of all, it's annoying the fuck out of me. (laughs) Let's just say that because I did the sort of, well, linear thing. I I actually went to school because after my mom died, I was like, if I don't go to Naropa, I'm, I'm done for like, I have to go to school for, for my own healing. And I will also get an education in the process. So just to be really transparent about that, but I got an education from the very best in the world in North America at Naropa University, like Diane Israel, who created the documentary, The Beauty Mark, and uh, Dewey Friedman, who is one of the leaders in gestalt horse therapy, equine therapy, Um, Karen Drucker, I I can't even, these are my professors that taught me so much while I was at Naropa. And um, I went through that program, it was a three-year program, and the last year of my program, I spent the whole year being supervised working with veterans with PTSD. So I worked with Vietnam veterans, and I worked with Afghan Iraq veterans. And I actually uh, really gained the the experience. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't mess up out of school. You know, there's certainly, uh, I would say that the the doom of my career as an employee has been wardrobe malfunctions, i.e. I forget that like, maybe don't go to work 
like and make a fashion statement. <laughs> like there's always like, oh, these wedges with the skirts can be fantastic. I go to work and they're like, you're fired. You can't wear that. Wrong move. And I've done it so many times where I went to work and I was like, I look great today. I have a blouse. I have a skirt. Not realizing when you sit directly across from a client as a female, if you even change leg directions, you just give them the peep show. You've given them the hallway to heaven, basically. Like, here you go. That'll be $10 extra. <laughs> and also, then this wife called the next day and was all like, are you trying to seduce my husband? I'm going to report you. And I was like, son of a bitch with the water. <laughs> so what I want to say is some things can be trained and some things you have to learn through failure, <laughs> right? And I think I think that's what people are saying when this is your origin story. Oh, you've tried and failed. Like how many, okay, Gary Vanderchuk, um, Eckhart Tolle, uh, Wayne Dyer, they all have their story of like, I was an abused orphan or I ran out of money. And then all of a sudden this miraculous thing sort of happened. And that then becomes their credential, their perseverance or their connectedness. But we never really, really, know the full story. Like that story has been filtered out through almost a formula that they tell you to tell as a coach. What your origin story is a formula. It's loosely based on Joseph Campbell's A Hero's Journey, which is like you're called to something, there's a there's like a calling and then uh after that calling happens, you're like, no, no, I don't want to do it. Then you say yes to it. Then you go through the struggle. Then you go through um, facing your demons, your shadow side. Then a mentor comes along and you start to learn those lessons. And then you have to come back into the world and be the teacher and give it to everybody else. So a lot of people talk about their origin story very much like that. Like I, I felt called to do this and then I, and then all these different things happen. Inevitably the part of the story, and this is, I was watching, uh, American Playboy, the story of Hugh Hefner, and that Playboy was actually going to be called Stag Party. But a week before Hefner went to print, he, excuse me, <coughs> there might be more of those. He got a cease and desist letter from somebody who already had a magazine called Stag. So he had to reinvent it and call it Playboy, and which we know is became like a multi million dollar business, like incredibly so. So what I share about that is that whatever you're calling is whatever pathway you're going down, um, normally there's obstacles in the way. But overcoming an obstacle does not make you a fucking qualified person to be a coach. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't like, great, you, you've had hard times and now you're, now you're doing this. But the, the, the issue that I take with it is that people with very little to no qualification or who haven't actually um, gone in to look at themselves and mine their own depths are stepping out into the field of coaching. So it almost becomes this watered down perpetuation of bullshit where uh, you have someone stepping into the quote unquote expert role or the guru role, the teacher role, who has no business they basically, they have no business being there, but they've made it their business. And a lot of these areas, I think, again, it's like, what does it take for a person to be qualified to help another person? What are we actually, what is life coaching? Like, what are we selling to somebody? I'm selling you a moment in time to write a goal list. And what? <laughs> like, and a lot of coaches will say, well, you know, psychotherapy doesn't work because you're focused on the issue, not the solution. And there's been like almost like this miscategorization of the foundation of where life coaching came out of, which was positive psychology. And there's been a disowning of those roots to say, like, well, you know, we're solution based, we're solution oriented. And I was like, I still take issue with uh, the whole thing because um, my perspective, my interesting per- point of view about this is that we are all sort of like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. We set out on this journey and we have uh, brains and heart 
and courage, the the lion and the tin man and the scarecrow. Um, as part of our psyches, the you know, the critic, the inner critic, the inner child, the uh the manager part of our psychology, again, uh, internal family systems really breaks us down into um the firefighters, the exiles, and the managers. And again, I'll put more about that in show notes, but those are sort of the ways our psyches are navigated. So the point is, uh, why is the industry of life coaching a billion dollar industry? Why have we so often looked towards gurus um, to teach us what we already know? Right? Oh, I, I'll like Matthew Hussey, fuck him, by the way, is this, he is this multi Matt Hussey. He wrote the book, like how to get the guy and whatever. And he came from the financial industry and he's so formulaic in his issue, but he'll teach you little things like what to text and what not to text and how to be flirty and how to be cute. And I was like, cool, you get to play on that like pharmaceutical level of take this pill and call me in the morning. Um, which is sort of at the band-aid level, which keeps people in their perpetual sort of addictive game of of like, it's almost like a video game of scoring points. So what I want to say is that solution-oriented coaching is sort of, um, and it can tend to be one, one part of the whole, it can be this band-aid type thing, like let's goal set, let's envision your future, let's use manifestation language, like and and then insidiously, what people will do is they'll push on your pain points. Oh, you have a childhood trauma that must really suck for you to be able to quote unquote extort money out of you. <laughs> now, I'm saying all of this because I take issue with my industry. I am a trained psychotherapist and have been so for six years. And oftentimes I look at my own life and I go, okay, I'm 37. I'm not married. I make a five-figure income. I have used my uh, inheritance to get me to this point in my life. Um, you know, obviously, I am not always healthy. So there's lots of sh- what you would call shortcomings in my life. And yet, people call me in their duress, their anxiety, and I help support them through that. And charge them for it and charge them money for it. So I'm front loading sort of that's like, the, that's the overarching story, right? Of what, of kind of the, that there's some charlatans out there. There's some people that can actually provide support and, and everybody's going to gravitate to the coach that sort of is, is at their level of development. Um, I tend to go really deep, really quickly with people to get towards that place of like remembering, like you are the Wizard of Oz. You're the great and mighty Oz, right? <laughs> and you're just walking down your yellow brick road. And Eckhart Tolle would be like, "There's no, there's no past or future. It's now, right? It's the moment that we're in that has the most potency." But I started to ask myself, like, okay, <clears throat> why are there so many life coaches? And why, why, like, why is that so? The first is because the regulations of the industry of um, psychotherapy, if you want to be a licensed therapist, there is a big test you have to take and there's 2,000 hours of work in the field that's required of you to 3,000 hours of work in the field. And for you to be legitimate in um, the realm of psychotherapy and also take insurance, it, it requires a commitment on your part to be able to do that. It requires getting your master's, um, same with the PhD, a thesis is required. And uh, there's just like a, a doctor has to go through boards and residency and put their decade in of time to be able to call themselves a doctor. So too does a psychologist or um, have to go through the rigors of doing that. There's a much higher bar to go into psychology, which by the way, is fucking effective. Okay. Like all the coaches dismissing psychology and being like, well, that's only blah, 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 past focus. I will say this, when I was in school at Naropa, gestalt experiential psychologists, people who are just not 
cognitive behavioral psychologists that would say like think differently, even that's effective. Behavioral psychologists, we've built, these are foundational pieces of how we are in the world, um, have helped a great catharsis and awareness come up in me. And there's several modalities that can lead to that. So uh, the, the point of that being is that the reason there's so many life coaches is the bar is much lower. You can take, you can take like an um, AL, AFL or whatever course, um, life coaching course over the course of a weekend and get like a certification and then hang your shingle more or less. Now, does, does it mean that that's not a value? No, of course, people get a lot out of the form and structure of life coaching, but um, the bar for life coaches is lower to be able to get into the field. In fact, again, the issue is that, that the field is saturated because the bar is lower and you can pretty much in many states just say, I'm a coach or a consultant or whatever. And then you can t- say, you know, business on front of it, or I'm a health coach or whatever, because it's like at any given time, you can just say, pick the industry, slap coach behind it, and then call yourself that and then write several blogs. And all of a sudden, now you're an expert, which basically, you know, I I think that what that creates, first of all, is for the people that are actually, it creates cacophony, it creates noise, just like in the market of the digital market of creating music, anybody with a with an iPad um, can say, oh, I'm a DJ now. And that creates like the quality, the actual quality of person is like, you're matching with this person who may be really good at creating a social media following, but it doesn't mean they're a good coach right? It doesn't really, you have to look beyond that digital veneer past that. And the the challenge is uh, there's so many pros out there. It's like for people that are qualified, who are truly maybe, um, who have put more time into their development and less time into social media, which you see their social media following is less, they can mean they can be more qualified, but they're not necessarily getting the financial six figure income because uh, because there is this watered down competition in place. So what does it take then to be a really qualified teacher? <laughs> what does it take to be able to go through to, through that because it's not untrue that your origin story is important. A uh, much of the reason I am a psychotherapist is because my father died when I was 20, my mother died when I was 27, and I had to make a decision on what to do with my life. Also, it's my calling. Also, it's a calling. So healers, acupuncturists, chiropractors, there's going to be the cream of the crop in the field, the mediocre, and just the shit, just the people that are going to do more damage than good. And I talked about this in an an adjacent way of thinking about uh, intimacy, there's going to be real, true, vulnerable, gut wrenching, committed intimacy then there's going to be mediocre intimacy, which is just like hit it and quit it, like sexual intimacy, masking as actual emotional intimacy. Then there's going to be the fucking devolved polyamory cuddle party, like we're so cool, not fake intimacy. Like again, there's layers, there's strata, there's actual strata within within these fields. So what I would encourage people to do is to say that to remember that you are the great and mighty Oz, that there is a soul blueprint that you're carrying inside of you, that you're going to feel inspired and called and pulled in a certain direction, whether that's being a farmer or being an artist or being a writer or being in the financial field, um, you're going to be called to learn a certain social language, a certain strata of the language. And if you're a carpenter, then, and you spend your time learning that language and learning how to build, that's very much your value. Your value to us is that you create homes. The value of coaches is um, 
hopefully to provide a safe container, a safe space where we can let our secrets go. We can say the things that have been handed down to us would like to choose differently. And, um, and that, that my training at Naropa was to come to the counseling without an agenda that you don't actually have this, like this person needs to get here by this time and it needs to look like this, but that you are in the gestalt, the moment with them discovering, uncovering, processing, huge part processing through the cellular memory, the uh, Akashic records, the, the spiritual memory of their bodies so that they can remember, truly, they can remember, reconnect to that thing that we call purpose in our lives. Now, purpose is not a panacea. It's not like, oh, great, I know my life purpose, and now everything's going to line up and be okay. Uh, it, it means that, again, uh, in Lisa Lister's book, Witch, she's like, you find mentors and you find t- people because they facilitate that magic that's already inside of you those elements that you're already going to connect with. Some people connect as witches. Some people connect more with crystals. Some people more connect with herbs. Some people connect with crystals and herbs and tinctures. Some witches go into the forest naked or dance around a bonfire. Others of us watch Netflix while drinking coffee and lamenting our lives and pulling tarot cards and swearing at them and then taking lavender baths, i.e. me. So (laughs) there's, there's, uh, the core of the story of life coaches at this particular, the boon of life, life coaches at this particular time is that many of us, and we've seen this in the LBGQT community, are vested in self-expression, in, are vested in like, who am I really? Who do I truly be in this lifetime? Because what we found through studies is that when you're more of who you truly be, more of who you really are, feel anchored and grounded in your body, embodied in this lifetime, understand that anxiety comes and goes. It's not who you are. Depression comes and goes. It's not who you truly are. Finances come and go. Your your bank account is not who you truly are. You be this essence, this sorceress, this oracle, this, uh, you know, maven, this force of nature. When you remember that, you are happier. <laughs> you are happier. You have, you connect to like joy and flow and you say, listen, I don't actually have to understand the entire map of my life. I just have to know the next thing. And there are moments where we get so stuck in our own loops or our own addictions or our own, um, we forget our capacity to hold discomfort that we rush for the quick thing, the quick fix of like the addiction, the drinking, the sex, the drugs. If I only had this, then I would. So the quality of coach that you work with, the quality of counselor you work with, the counselor that you truly be, the path we're all fucking on is who am I? (laughs) Who am I really? Like what is freedom? And freedom is being who you truly be. And I'll I'll just give one quick example of this and we'll wrap up this podcast and, and give you the answer to the meaning of life coaches, the guru versus you is for so long, um, I knew I was a true psychic when I was 22 years old. I got my master's when I was 31 years old. I had these two conflicting worlds, the clinical world of a master's degree and the tradition around that and the spiritual world of being a psychic and the sort of um, ostracism around that. Like that's weird. That's just not Christian. (laughs) And then how to sort of meld these worlds together. And it wasn't until this year that I was like, oh, it's because I'm a witch, (laughs) right? I know the apothecary, the alchemy side of things, but I also know the metaphysical side of things. And that in in the world, when I say world witch, it's like roots go into the ground. I feel my solar plexus open up. I feel expansion. That word doesn't fit everybody. It's not going to create that visceral effect for everyone. So in that remembering that really huge essence of who I am, the like one of the core components of how I'm expressed in this world and started to use the word witch, it is attracted people to me that are uh, supporting 
the journey. Like I just recently had a conversation with somebody who's like, would you like to be on TV? And I was like, yeah, duh, yes, I'd love to be on TV to promote breakup rehab, to to push the message of healing broken hearts. And he's like, the whole reason I even reached out to you is because I saw hashtag divorce, hashtag witch on your Instagram. I've been following you. I really like your energy and your posts, but the women empowerment that you've been talking to because of the witch thing pulled me towards you to create to create more. So the meaning of life coaches, if you're really gonna gonna work with one, is because those are going to be the cattle the real quality life coaches. You know their quality when they're catalysts that facilitate your Wizard of Oz journey, that you're the great that the knowing that is inside of you, the remembering, right? And that there's there's not shame put into the um, into the formula so that uh, that you're not constantly looking to the guru outside of you, but rather you bow to the guru within. You bow to the guru within. So thank you all for listening to Heard Not Seen. Um, this is just a, this is a hot topic because there's a lot of competition and, and different challenges within this field to know what strata, what quality you're on. And just to clear, to clear that up for anybody, I'm one of the best just to be humble (laughs) about it. When it comes to really working with somebody who's going to facilitate you being who you truly are, I would definitely recommend working with me. No bias involved. This has been Heard Not Seen. Go to the show notes for all the goodies. This is Rebecca Freedom and be set free.